terrible name to do. You know? And I'm known as the mean man in Wasp, right? And that way, uh, when well, I've been putting the whole band together, and uh, we'll probably change it to mean men. We call it mean man, mean men, it doesn't matter. And the first record called Nothing to Lose, I, I, uh, I started recording it with a filthy animal, Taylor. He's the ex-drummer of Motorhead. Him and I became friends. We've been friends in L.A. since '91. And him, we were. I'd see Phil. We were friends from then, off and on. And uh, one day, about two oh, maybe seven, I was at his apartment and I saw he had a computer. And he had his electric drum drum set up. And uh, I was just over there. He needed some help with a car, something in his car. And I was helping him, I saw it, and I go, well, Phil, you're playing again. He goes, yeah. So he, he goes, listen, he put on headphones. He was playing with a guy from the Stooges, this guy Whitey. And uh, um, I listened to it, and I go, man, that's the worst guitar sound. And he's got, he goes, why, can you do any better? And I go, yeah, let me, I'll bring some equipment over tomorrow. And I plugged it in, and so we, we started playing to learn how the computer works. Because it went from, did you know, tape. To digital and uh, we started recording just learning that way you know and um, we recorded a f bunch of few songs and we you know became close friends we enjoyed doing it and the computer broke down a lot uh, and there's a lot of time he was always doing a computer I was playing the guitar but we learned the ins and outs of it and um, then we got a, we had enough songs for an album and we said well let's do an album it was going to be a instrumental and um, I sang on one accidentally never even never even wanted to sing really I like I like to just play you know jump around and play don't have to sing but I sang on a song called the old lion sheet and um, been singing on another one called the Mormon moron I used to be a Mormon I'm not anymore so I was, when I was able to leave the church I left I left so anyway, I wrote that, the more and more, more on, sang on that, and then uh, um, you know, I sang on a few more, and it just happened that way. We, about 2.11, 2011, we were about to, we were starting to mix the album, and, or get a mix, we were talking to some people, whatever, blah, 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 to do it. And uh, he had a brain aneurysm, you know, got sick. Went in the hospital and kind of, his, his uh, music career kind of right then was over. And so I was left with the pieces. I was like, I, I didn't know what to do. So I mixed the album. I got that mixed, and during the process of mixing it, I had a bunch of other songs I, I recorded. And I had the time, so I recorded them. And I mixed, we put out that album, and I already recorded this Shitting Bricks, and I put it, in a, it was on a hard drive. And my wife and I decided to come over here and do a band here. Because L.A., I was just beating around the bush, you know, with L.A. musicians. I'm not not saying bad things towards them. I just, I had my, I just couldn't do a band there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because the drugs and alcohol, I don't know. And so two years ago, we came over, to, uh, I got rid of everything, came over here, mixed the second one here. Um, some guy, a friend of mine named Eric, mixed it, shooting bricks. And uh, <clears throat> I wish the whole, I wish the band guys were on the record, but they're not. They'll be on the next one. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I went to Finland first because there was a few friends there to play with. I was going to try to play with some Finnish people uh, last year, year and a half ago, and uh, the. The guys that I worked with were too interested in being rock stars and drinking. And, um, you know, they got drunk on stage and it really, really pissed me off. You know, I don't, I don't mind people that drink. I drank all my life, but, you know, people, when they pay money to come to a show, they don't want to see somebody drunk stumbling up there. 
And they got, and I just got tired of it. So we came down to Cannes. My wife, my wife's parents live in Cannes, and we came down here. And I, um, I met a, f a few friends, and then they you meet people, you know. When you're famous, you can go out and never people want to meet whatever. You just run into people. We, I met the guitar player Tom. We met Pasquel, and um, we've had a few drummer problems, you know. But we're getting it down. Here. Well, Phil and I composed the first album. He's on that together. Uh -huh. And the second album, I did it all. That way, it'd be a whole band. It's better to collaborate with other people because you have different ideas and interests and stuff like that. You know, it's a lot of it's it's an extremely amount of work to do it yourself. You know, but um, f from me working with Phil the drummer, I, I know how to do the drums. Like, I don't play them, but I know how to program them. It's easier to program them. Then you don't got to put up with the drummer. Uh -huh. Put up with this bullshit, making it to rehearsal, you know, this and then recording it. But it, it, I like to play with the members, you know. I like playing live. I like playing live. Recording is just, you know. It's fun to put all the things together. It's like Mozart or Beethoven. I'm sure when they were writing the songs, you know, these songs, I guess they sit at the piano. But you can't play the whole thing, you know. But you get an idea of what something would sound like. And then you can, you can record it. And once you get it recorded, then you can sit back and listen to it and go, wow. Because you can't really tell it. You kind of can tell what they're, have the ideas, but you can't tell what they sound like until you put it together. I like recording, but I, I like playing live better. If I had a choice of doing one or the other, it'd be playing live. As writing lyrics, you know, I've listened to what other people write and tr try to um, get the ideas, but I just found, just figured out, I just write things about reality, you know, about people I met, uh, things I've done. This, like the song Shitting Bricks comes from me running from the cops. You know, cops pull you over and you oh. take off. I don't know if they do that here, but in America they do it a lot. <laughs> and you run from them and you can get, if you can get away. But that song's about <clears throat> in the moment of running from them and them chasing you. Called, and sh it's a, Shitting Bricks is a, 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 it's a term in America like I was scared. I was so scared I was shitting bricks. That's the, and then the other, there's other songs, there's like Get With It was about a friend that's just an idiot, an idiot. But I enjoyed putting the words together um, and doing it. And there's a song on there called Two, Two, Two Face Motherfucker. Um, to figure out what the song's about, you got to listen to the lyrics. And once you do, you'll understand exactly who it's about. You just, you know, writing reality songs. I don't want to write songs about the cosmos and, you know, things that aren't real, you know. And I'm not going to write songs like Lady, You Know Me, The Perfect Love Machine. I mean, to me, I, I don't want to harp on that stuff. You know, I'm not, I'm not into that crap. But I'd rather write, if you're an asshole, I'm going to write a song if you're an asshole. What an asshole. <laughs> I miss the, I miss the part of when I traveled that way, I was on a bus, you know, and I didn't have to worry about my instruments or guitars or anything. I'd walk in the sound check, play a few notes, give the roadie the guitar and then come out and play. I just had to take care of myself. But in this instance, you know, I'm starting out again. I got to worry about my stuff, you know, so it's a little harder, but I, I like to play, you know, a lot of people from the 80s uh, that aren't, most a lot of them aren't even playing anymore, you know. They don't get to go out and play, so I just one good thing, I could still walk, you know. I'm kind of in good health, I guess. Um, yeah, I miss playing arenas. I'll, hey, I'm going to play some festivals. There's better than arenas, right? <laughs> No, no, of course they're going to want me to play the old songs. That's what they know me for. 
You know, I can't... I don't mind playing the old songs as long as they sound good. I, I know it's not going to be like Wasp because Blackie's voice was the main thing. I mean, that was probably the main... That was the main thing of the band, his voice, you know. Of course, you know, it's not there, but they're going to want to expect to hear that. I understand that. I, you know, hey, I wrote the songs. I wrote them, you know. I, I wrote all the guitar stuff in them. I didn't write the lyrics. Hey, I, I would be a, I'd be pissed off if I came to see somebody I liked and they didn't play the songs. You know, that, those songs are what made me. Those are the songs what made me. That's so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The last album, I did it all myself. And the one before that, Phil and I did it. But before that was all with Blackie. But I used to give Blackie so many song ideas, you know, on tape. A whole song written out. I'd give it to him. And I can remember one day he came down to my apartment and I wrote, um, it was in 95 and it's right when digital got a little cheaper and there's a thing called a D88, it was 8 track. It was, it was kind of before computers were what they are now and I recorded some things that were just really, I mean, it was, it was really good to me. It, it was cool. and. Uh, he comes down, he listens to one, listens to another, listens to another. And then he, he goes, you got anything else? You know, and my jaw hit the ground. I go, what else do you want? You know, I mean, well, it's, it's, it's this four songs, are, to me, they're good enough. You got anything else? And then he, then he just went, uh, you know, basically, to get one song, I'd write a hundred. I, that's weird, everybody composes different, you know. All the Wasp albums, you know, I was, um, you got to get done by 2 o'clock or else, you know. I like, I love composing it myself, just the music I did myself. The fans, I saw some fans last night singing the songs that I wrote, that I wrote. Kind of made me happy. Oh, they were yeah. singing Two-Faced Motherfucker. I enjoyed it. I, it made me happy. <laughs> I, uh, man, when I toured with Wasp, we played so many damn places. I know, I know in the 80s we went into Poland and a few places. I didn't even, you, you know the itinerary tells where you're going? I never even looked at that. I didn't have to worry about where I was, you know, so I, it was kind of fun. I just, I worried about that bottle. Uh -huh. It made me happy. So I don't, know, I don't know if we played here. I couldn't tell you. I know we went into Poland and Warsaw. Oh, yeah. I've just seen here in the places, the fan, the people are great, you know, it's what everybody last night that I talked to after the show was cool, you know, the band members. I want to go see the river, um, this is where they filmed Triple X, right, the movie where, where Van Diesel was, filmed, was going yeah. down, yeah, I want to go see that, where I saw that movie, I went, wow, what a cool looking city. No, man, the... the the audience usually is the same around the world, except in Japan, their their culture is different. They don't have security guards in between the band and the stage, and they're real polite. They don't leave their seat. You know, if their seats, they don't leave their seats at all to get up closer, and they don't crowd people uh -huh. right next door. You know, the only thing last night is somebody jumped, got up on the stage and jumped off. Stave dove. I don't know if you ever heard of that. And he hit two people and knocked one girl back on her head. And that's not fair for her. I don't give a fuck. The guy jumps off and wants to do it. Head dive the concrete. But don't hurt somebody else. I think she got hurt. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, Mount Everest. I like to play on top of Mount Everest. I don't know. I've always had a dream to walk there. I'd like take acoustic guitar, and play Yankee Doodle Dandy or something, Kumbaya. You know, <laughs> get up there and play Fuck Like a Beast. You know, a few places I'd like to play. You mean play now with Mean Man? I'd like. I'm gonna tour. If I can, you know, when we get it up and running and everything with the right, you know, stuff, we can play the whole world. We'll play everywhere. You know, last last night was the first show. That I, we've ever did so. It'll uh, the next, yeah. It only gets better.
Well, usually I lay parallel. No, horizontal. Parallel. I lay on the ground. I just lay down, go to sleep. You know? I can't, after the gig, I can't rest because I got to go out. Years ago, they didn't do this, but now you go out into merchandise and you sign things. People bring their old records, they want them signed, you know? So you got to do that. <laughs> I like the part of it, it makes people happy, it makes them put a smile on their face, you know. That they get to take a picture with somebody that probably they never thought they would be able to. And they, usually a lot of people smile and say thanks. I like that, you know. I don't like making people sad, but I like to see some people happy, you know. The, the Pope, I'm not religious, but... He was just in America. I like the guy because everybody that sees him, they have a smile on their face. He makes people happy. I don't like people that make people sad. I hate that, you know? And last night, you know, when you sign things, people are happy for it, you know? I like that. I like, I like when I'm playing on stage to see people smiling and happy in the audience. <laughs> That's just changing. That's just the changing of the times, you know. That's you mean the piracy and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. the way it is, you know. If you don't like it, hey, you know, do something else. It's, so, it's just the way to. Dig, it's the digital world, you know. It's the way it is. Okay. So. I mean, that's, you can't change that. The recording's just recording's gotten different with uh, the digital. Oh, way better than analog. I kind of like it because. Um, I don't want to bring up a bad subject, but I ne as publishing of Wasp, I never got a penny of publishing for all the work I did, or the ideas that came out of my head. I didn't get publishing, so it doesn't bother me. Steal all you want. Well, I don't trust anybody else. I, I never got a penny out of Wasp. My, I'm famous, whoa, quote famous, but all my publishing Money goes right in the, the mat in somebody's pocket, okay. and that's the way it is. It's my own fault. I didn't. I trusted somebody who I shouldn't have trusted. The producer that produced the records, and uh, they, they, uh, my name's on the records as a songwriter, right? But I don't get the money for it today. I don't get nothing from Wasp. The digital age is harder on some people. You know the. People that need that, when they made the money in the 80s, <coughs> that way, that's gone. Gone. Can't do that anymore. It's the way it is. You know, either change with the times or get out.